I tell you, I feel good in my soul tonight. In my deep down, in my sanctified soul. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I just praise God for what he is to me tonight. Truly the Lord is everything to me. Glory to God. You know, I'm, I, I always say, and I thank him for coming into my life. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Out of all of them kin people that I have, we have some saved and a whole lot that's not. But he reached down and picked me. You know I thank him for that. And tonight I'm on my way to hell. And thank God I'm enjoying the trip. Give Jesus a big hand tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to pray for me tonight as we go to the word of God. I'm calling your attention to the book of Romans 6, 1 and 2 and the 23rd verse. Romans 6 and 1. Uh-huh. What shall we say then? Yes. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Mm -hmm. God forbid. Yes. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Amen. The 23rd verse. Yes. For the wages of sin is death. Uh-huh. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Thank God for the reading of his word tonight. And I'm going to use tonight for a little thought that payday is coming. Payday is coming. The Apostle Paul was talking to the Roman church and he asked them a question. What shall we say then? After the Lord has came into our lives and filled us with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I want to know what shall you say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He's saying here, shall we continue to sin? After we've been, after we have died with Christ, have been buried with him, have been risen, glory to God, up in his power. Glory to God. Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? He said, I want to know how this can be. Because when you think of it, I've never seen a dead man smoke a cigarette. I've never seen a dead man steal anything from anybody. I've never heard a dead man curse. You see, when God comes into your life, and when you sure enough, sure enough, get saved, all things are passed away. You are dead to those things. Praise God. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? This is why tonight that we report victory over sin and shame. This is why tonight that when we get up and testify and say, I've been saved all day. No evil have I done. You're talking about a new creature. You see, when you was in sin, you did everything you was big enough to do. But when Christ came into your life, that old devil went out. That body died. That old self of you died. Amen. And the apostle Paul is asking this question. I want to know. And I want to know today. Why do people keep on sinning when you know that God has delivered you from that? It simply means one thing. 
that you wasn't dead good enough. You just got killed off. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when God comes into your life, and when he kills you, you are dead to sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I want you to know one thing today. If you continue in your sins, you got a payday coming. I say you have a payday coming. Oh, a lot of people today don't believe me. I hear minister after minister say that we can't say. I heard one minister say that he said if you say that you can live free from sin, he said you a lie and the truth not in you. Well, I know that he couldn't hear me, but I was talking to the television. I said you a lie and the truth not in you. Hallelujah, because when God comes in, yes. sin goes out. Yes. Ooh, ain't you glad about it tonight? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. He said, for the wedges of sin is dead. God wants us to know that. The wedges of sin, when your payday comes, you're going to receive eternal death. Not eternal life. You can skip around here and half step. But I want you to know payday is coming. Amen. Amen. And when you get your payday, you're going to be awfully sorry. You're going to be awfully sorry. And you're going to be shamed. Because God saves us from sin and shame. When you get before God and all the other saints are there, and they thought, so well, no, she didn't do nothing. she didn't do those things. But God have a record. Amen. He have a book. It's just like your boss man. You go in, you clock in at work, and when you clock in, that means times begin. Amen. And when you clock out, that means you're gone. Well, you see, same way it is with God. When we clock in with God, our time begins. But if you clock out before you're supposed to clock out, you're gone. You know God just don't play. Amen. You owe God everything. Not only do you owe God uh, for just the little things you thought you did, you owe him your whole entire life. When he comes into your life, you owe him the rest of your life. Whether you came in at age 16 or whether you came in at age 75, you owe God the rest of your life. And you need to serve him like there is no tomorrow. Who knows it might not be. Glory to God. The wedges of sin is dead. But but the gift of God is eternal life. And I'm so glad tonight that I got the gift of God. I have the life of Jesus Christ abiding in me right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone that's saved here tonight, you have the life of Jesus Christ abiding in you right now. And that's the reason why when he comes and calls for his saints, it's not going to be easy for us. It's not going to be hard for us to get up and hear the call. When the trumpet sounds, every one of God's people is going to get up out of the ground or wherever you are. And you're going out to meet the Lord because we have a payday. And you know, I'm glad tonight that I know that God is a good paymaster. He's a good paymaster. Not only is he going to pay you when it's over here, he's going to pay you now. He promised to bless us. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all of these things, everything that you need in this world will be added unto you. Give Jesus a hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sinner man, 
You got a terrible payday, terrible wage. Amen. You got a blank check. My God. You know, when you got a blank check, you better not mess with that check. If you write something and you know you ain't got nothing in the bank, you're going you're gonna to get in a little trouble. So when people are hypocrite and not living right, when you get before God, your wedges is going to be blank. Amen. He said, depart from evil and do good and live forevermore. And the Apostle Paul also said, there is therefore now, right now, you can live the life. No condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The flesh is what's going to get you in trouble. I said your flesh is what's going to get you in trouble. But God said we can live a life that is free from condemnation. Why don't you give Jesus another hand to that? Praise God. The word tells us that he left us an example that we should follow in his steps who knew no sin and neither was there any God found in his mouth. I believe that's what the word said, didn't it? Hallelujah. And we got to follow Jesus. Every step, if we follow Jesus as he walked in this land, and as he left here, we're going to do just like he did. Ain't you glad about that? Amen. Hallelujah. One day, we're going to be uh, translated just like he was. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, people are walking in condemnation because they don't want to do what's right. Well, obey God's word. When the Lord tells us something, we must do it. Every word of God is right. Amen. Every word. Glory to God. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God is exactly right. Clap your hands for Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. The word teaches us that our job is to put a difference between holy and unholy, clean and unclean. That's our job every day of our life. We don't have time to try to check nobody else, amen, and correct nobody else. Just keep yourself straight. If you, do, if you keep yourself straight, you have done a job well done. Lift your hands to Jesus and tell him thank you. If God didn't care about how we lived or what we do, what we say, how we dress, where we go, if he didn't want us to stop doing anything, then this portion of the scripture is vain. But oh no, it's not God that's vain, it's you. That is vain. You cannot be in sin and in God at the same time. It just won't work. Light has no fellowship with darkness. You can walk in this building and it could be black as a midnight when you walk in here. But the minute you turn the light on, you can see darkness running out of here. Darkness go to getting as soon as the light come on. And that's the way it is in our lives. We don't have to worry about it. When, when the light of Christ come in our life, darkness go out. And you know, I'm so glad today. It's such a pleasure for me to live for God. What about you? It's a pleasure. It's just, you know, I thank God. A lot of people sit around and talk about, oh, look at all I had to give up. To walk with God. I tell you, I sure miss those things and them friends I used to have. 
you, you just got killed off. You ain't dead. But when you think about it, it's not so much of what you, give, you gave up. It's what you received. You were walking in darkness. You were walking in death. But God reached and got you and pulled you up out of the pit. Glory to God. And placed your feet on this highway of hope. Hallelujah. And gave you a mind to live a sin-free, holy life. My God, hallelujah. I love the portion of scripture where David said, God, he took my feet out of the miry clay. He said, I was bogged down in sin. You know, sin is nothing but dirt. It's dirty. Sin is nasty. Hallelujah. But David said, he took my feet. That's the 40th Psalm. Out of the miry clay. Placed them on a rock. Hallelujah. And he established my going. Hallelujah. I'm a step tonight. Uh, all about the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. He said, because iniquity abound, the love of many, we talking about sin, but you are going to have a payday. Everybody in here tonight, whether you are saved or whether you are, are a sinner, you are going to have a payday. The difference is, if you're saved, your payday is eternal life and blessings and being over there shouting all over God's help. Hallelujah. I just imagine I can see some folks when they get through them gates. Hallelujah. You know, they have been saying that heaven is 1,500 miles. Yes, it did. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And just think, you can just shout as long as you want to. Far as you want to go. All over God's heaven. Hallelujah. That's what's going to be prepared for us. Glory to God. But the sinner man, you are going to receive eternal damnation. And as soon as the breath go out of your body, if you are not saved, you go straight to torment, straight to hell. Is that right? You go straight to hell if you are not saved right then. Amen. But if you are saved, you go straight to paradise. Isn't that beautiful? Lazarus laid at the rich man's gate. And he laid there day after day, designed the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Well, the rich man was living good. And the Bible said he fared sumptuously every day. He had servants at his fingertip. All he had to do, pop his finger, ring a bell. He had servants. Paul Lazarus had nothing. He was poor and laying at his gate, designed the crumbs. Now, you know this man was hungry. Designed the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. And uh, the rich man seen Lazarus out there, but he's all oh, that's that old poor man full of sores, wishing somebody would get him out from around my gate. I could hear it in my mind. But the rich, the poor man was with God, even though he had nothing, but he had God. Didn't have no earthly things, nothing to look to in the earth but God. But he had God. The rich man was living fine and he had everything down here that a person could want and desire. But he didn't have God. And I'm telling you tonight, if you don't have God, you don't have nothing. Not a thing. Well, Lazarus died, and the angels came, the Bible says, and picked him up, took him, laid him in the bosom of Abraham, which is a place of rest. But the Bible said that the rich man 
all so die. But he said, but in hell, he lifted up his eyes. He went straight to hell. Then all at once his mind clicked in. And he began to think about Lazarus was laying at my gate. But you see, the Lord just let him see it. You see, the Lord sometimes works in mysterious ways. He, in other words, I could see in my mind that God said, Rich man, I want you to see this. He looked over there and saw Lazarus laying in the bosom of Abraham in peace, perfect health, no more sores, no more poor man. He had everything. Hallelujah. He was laying in paradise. He was with God. Glory to God. And the rich man thought about how he treated that poor old man. Amen. And he said, Father Abraham, if you would do me just a favor, send Lazarus back. Send Lazarus to me. That's what he said at first. And let him bring some water. And just put a drop of water on my scorching tongue. He said, for I'm tormented in this flame. Hallelujah. But God began to talk to him. He said, the man said, well, if you won't send him to me, Father, I ask you to send him back and tell my brothers and my father. Tell them not to come here. Jesus said, they got some preachers back there. They got Moses and the prophets back there. And if they don't hear them, neither will they hear one, though he be raised from the dead. And I'm telling you tonight, if you don't hear what I'm saying tonight, and sending you a warning, Neither would you hear Jesus if he was standing right here. Because certainly he was raised from the dead. Why don't you lift your hands and praise him? Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. But that is the end of a person that ignores God. Pay God no attention. Just decide he's going to live in his own way. Amen. People talking about how they love God, yet they don't want to uh, live for God. People today is living their own religion and uh, doing what they want to on their own time. Amen. People today are doing just exactly what they want to do. They shout in the churches. They got a form of godliness. But they're denying the power thereof. They have a form, but they deny that you can be kept by the power of God. They deny that. They say, I don't believe that you can live like that. One of the reasons why sinners today sometimes is so hard to reach them is because some so-called church people don't live like they're supposed to live. And that's why. There's a lot of people on your job don't even know you say. They see you and say, oh, when did you get saved? Been working there 10 years. <laughs> but I want you to know, Kieran, you got to live the life. Amen. Therefore, if any man, I'm quoting 2 Corinthians 5 17, if any man be in Christ, he is, not was, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things is become new. Isn't this wonderful, this new walk? Hallelujah, when we, when we got saved, and I'm sure it happened to you, when the Lord saved me, when I got up the next morning, I went up and down the street telling everybody I could see that the Lord had came into my life. Amen. I just started praising God. Uh, me and my cousin got saved the same night. And the next day, praise God, we were going to tell him it, and we were just praising God and shouting all that next day. Hallelujah. Because I was glad 
to be saved. Certainly God drew me. God drew me himself. My mother was saved, but she couldn't save me. And I had thought when I get grown, I'm not going to be saved anymore. See, mama told me. She said, I'm telling you something. If you're not saved, you better act like it. She meant it. She meant it. Honey, I, I, I praise God. I got saved like a lot of children do. Get saved over and over again. You know, you see them at the altar every night. They get saved over and over again. But when I got 18 years old, the Lord started calling me. Long in my 17th year, the Lord started calling me by my name. I couldn't rest at night. I couldn't sleep. I'd pull the covers over my head and get way down up under the covers to try to keep from hearing that voice telling me to come to him. I drop off to sleep and that voice sound like thunder. Say, Shirley, come to me. Will you come to me? And it was about to drive me nuts. And I tell you, I got up one night, I said, Mama, is it anybody having a revival anywhere in the city? She said, yeah. She told me where a revival. Let me tell you something. I was alone about the first one there. And when I wanted the man to hurry up and get through preaching, can't tell you what he preached about, what book not chapter. I wanted God had already preached to me. And I wanted to hit that altar, and I did. And let me tell you something. God saved me that night. Yeah. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I promised him that night. This is the reason I'm so dedicated to God now. It's because I promised him that night. I said, Lord, if you save me, I'll never turn back. I'm going all the way with you. Whatever it takes. And I don't care about the trials and tribulations. They come. But they come to make you strong. Yeah. Hallelujah. Did you know your trials and your tribulation is God's vote yeah. of you, of the confidence he has in you? Yeah. That's the reason why. That when you're going through, he said, thank the Lord for all things. Yeah. Hallelujah. Whatever comes, thank God. Because, because God have it all in control. Why don't you praise him tonight? Hallelujah. Glory to God. While we was yet sin sinners, God commended his love toward us. And that we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, everybody here, think back. You was ungodly. You did things you ought not do. You went places you ought not go. And before that you even knew anything about God at all, Christ loved you and he died for you. Amen. Before the foundation of the world, the Lord seen you and I and all of us he seen us, and he was saying, I want this one, I want this one, I want this one. Amen. The peak of the world, he died. He picked us out to be in the kingdom of God with him. I mean, you need to shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because he didn't have to pick you. He could have left you out there and you still be out there rugging, drinking. Tearing the world to the floor up at the hunky time. Doing the boogaloo. Drinking. Smoking. Murdering. Oh, God. Incest and rapes. You'd be depressed, oppressed, processed. Amen. If God had to call you. Glory to God, but he picked us out to have a good payday. Yes, sir. I'm going to have a good check. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Glory to God.
of God. When we work on these natural jobs and do what they tell us to do and even go beyond that, you look for a good payday. Hallelujah. Well, I'm telling you tonight, I'm looking for a fat paycheck. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When I get over there, Brother Tony saying so many times, when I get over there, I just want to walk down by that river that's clear as crystal. You can see the bottom of it. Don't have to worry about no fish. Just walk down by the river. And who knows? Jesus may let us walk on the water like he did. Hallelujah. I just want to get in this wiggle my toes. So thank God I made it. These old feet been running for a long time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Home at last. Glory to God. Go out to that tree of life with all of that fruit on it. That bear fruit every season. Hallelujah. The, the fruit on the tree it's good for the hidden abomination. And listen to this. Just the leaves, the leaves. You can eat the leaves. Now you can walk out there and eat some leaves and you'll fall dead. <laughs> My God. But when we get over there, not only is we going to have the fruit, the leaves on the tree, everything in heaven is good. Hallelujah is good for the healing of the nation. No more sickness. No more sorrow. No more disappointment. I'm talking about payday. No more lies being told on you. Go on where the wicked shall cease from trouble. And the weary shall be at rest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Somebody said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to tell God all about my trouble. But I, I said, you know this tonight. When my feet strikes out, I'm going to forget about my troubles. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we say. Woo, hallelujah. I praise him tonight. I'm glad tonight that I'm looking for a payday. Payday's coming, children. Hallelujah. Somebody say you better get ready. Because payday is coming after a while. Oh, hallelujah. I'm thankful tonight that we serve a God who never loses his ability to see and to bring his word past. That that he promised us, he'll do. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. If he said it, he'll do it. You know, all we have to do is stand on the word of God. You know, a lot of times when we stand on the word of God, seem like sometimes he said, when you've done all you can do to stand. Stand there, folks. Just stand anyhow. And sometimes we are on the E of therefore. And sometimes that E done bent in the middle. But you just stand there anyhow. Hallelujah. Because the Lord promised I'll never leave you. Now will I forsake you. He said I'm with you to the end of the world. Saints ain't that good enough. I said ain't that good enough. Ain't that good news? Hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus. Glory to God. Behold, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro in all of the earth, beholding the good and the evil. And that's the reason why he's going to pay us with righteous judgment. Because his eyes is going to and fro 
over all the earth. He never slumber, neither do he sleep. And not only is he watching us, but he's watching over Amen. us. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. Praise God. Thank God. Don't go back to your old ways, but press on forward. Be like the Apostle Paul said. I press toward the mark of a higher calling in Christ Jesus. I'm going to press on. I'm going to press by everything that's not like God. Talk about me, mistreat me, criticize me, ostracize me, set me aside. That's all right. I'm going for my payday. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. One day, we all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And John declared, I saw them, both small and great, stand before God. What are they, what are they standing there for, Sister Mary? They are standing there to be judged. Do you realize tonight that we're going to have to give an account of every deed that has been done in our body. We got to give an account of everything. The Bible says we're going to have to give an account of every idle word. We're going to have to give an account. You know, payday's coming. When we stand at the bar and we hear our name read and hear our name called, when we go up, we want God to see nothing on that page. Am I right? Yeah. I don't want him to see nothing. Yeah. I want a clear page. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. I paid my tithes and offerings. I gave to the poor. Jesus spoke of the poor. He said, the poor have a gospel preached to them. And I, I did everything, Lord. I lived a life. I gave up my sins. I, I gave up lies. I just gave up everything. And when I get before God and Jesus' blood has erased everything that God had against me, I feel so good. Amen. Some of you, I just imagine if we, you're not going to have no shoes to take with you. Because nothing you brought in this world and nothing you're going to take out. But you're going to shout all over God's head. You're going to shout. I know you're going to shout. When you get inside that gate and that gate closed behind you and you say, I'm safe. I'm safe. At last. Glory to God. That's going to be a beautiful time. God bless you. Everyone stand.